Everybody, listen to me, please. I'm going to do it Vin Diesel style. I've been on this movie for the past five years, even more, six to seven years. When I look at all this and I ask, people know I've been asking around, where did I go wrong? Nobody can tell me or nobody allows himself to tell me. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying. I tried to get out of this movie because if I can't work, I'd rather be home. But I can't. I can't stop the fight. So I want to apologize. I want to apologize for what's coming next. I want to apologize for the mess that we're in with this movie and that you have to deal with a director who can be a little crazy, but this is where I got my strength and this is what the movies I do are like that are, and are different from the others. I'm not Orson Welles. I'm not Steven Spielberg. I'm fucking Matthew Kasowitz. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Have you ever been in an institution? Cells. Cells. Do they keep you in a cell? Cells. Cells. When you're not performing your duties, do they keep you in a little box? Cells. This causes it. This causes it. This causes it. Information overload. All the electronics around you poisoning the airwaves. You are listening to the High Tech Low Life Podcast, a cyberpunk media retrospective. High Tech Low Life contains language and themes not suitable for all audiences, as well as spoilers for the content being covered. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, everybody, to the High Tech Low Life Podcast with your hosts, Eric and Josh. I'm Eric. I'm Josh. Just a nice, straightforward, professional intro this week. No shenanigans. No shenanigans, no high energy drive time DJ shit. I think it was pretty high energy. It wasn't low energy. I, well, it wasn't that like high energy drive time DJ shit. True, true. Uh, you may have heard I we opened with a little clip from the actually it's the very first scene of the documentary fucking Kasovitz, the mm-hmm. making of Babylon AD, because I feel like it really describes the frustration of making and watching this movie. And uh, yeah. seemed like a good way to start. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, like, just just in case, so we don't forget. Uh, thank you to uh, listener Mupper for suggesting this. Um, yeah, and the fucking documentary. <laughs> yeah, documentary's hard to watch if you don't speak French. Uh, but uh, he was right in that the gist still comes across pretty well. Yes, um, that is certainly true. The my my very bad French was catching just enough to where I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, he's got a point. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll talk about that in a second when we get to that part portion of the show, but uh, there's a little teaser. That we will. It's, it's frustrating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Before that, what is up, bro? What is up, bro? Um... Well, uh, sad to say, we're still on our normal dystopia shenanigans. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see, anything uh, fun and exciting happened in the last week as far as that goes? I, I can't, I mean, you know, there was a, a couple of days of not quite ceasefire. We could talk about the hilarious uh, Elon Musk interview. I, I don't know if it's oh, dystopian. Oh, Jesus Christ, you're right. It was very funny. <laughs> It's dystopian for my brain health. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and it is like, it is kind of a gift for those of us who've been screaming that just because someone's super rich doesn't mean they need to be valued in any way whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. He is one of the stupider people on the planet. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen it, which uh, I find hard to believe because, well, like not everybody listens to this on Twitter. Um, yeah. He gave an interview with, I can't even remember. The, well, he couldn't remember the guy's name uh, either. Yeah. Uh, his last name was Sorkin. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, Andrew something. Yeah. Sorkin. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. His name was Andrew, and he called him Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, I remember Andrew and Jonathan. <laughs> the only reason I'm here, Jonathan, is because you're a good friend of mine. I'm My Andrew. My name's Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, uh, well, I don't know. It was a funny interview where 
Andrew called him out on a lot of really basic <laughs> problems that he's been having with Twitter. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Elon basically responded, fuck you. The earth will be on my side. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he seems to he seems to be um, calling towards future histories for justification of what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't even know what to say about it. It's Except, oh shit! I remember something else. We this is pretty much anyway. We'll talk about Elon, but we there is something in Dystopia Talk good news that happened. Oh, okay, cool. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know it. You'll okay. slap yourself when I say it. Oh, probably. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, my brain worms are real bad these past couple of years. Right, here, here's a hint. You'll kiss yourself when I say it. Ooh, wait, that sounds exciting. <laughs> you didn't get it. All right. All right. We'll get there. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, one of the fun points of the Elon uh, interview was that he was questioned as to whether it made sense to be angry at advertisers for leaving because of the policies that he has rolled back. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was a really fun presentation of, no, you see, I have to have free speech and advertisers have to support this free speech. It's I'm, I'm allowed to do, to call out the great replacement theory and they're not allowed to think anything bad of it. It's it's just a beautifully deranged it's microcosm of how the rich think think that we are beholden to them for everything. It's I mean it's just a very boiled down version like I, of that. Like I said, I really do think it's it's a gift because it's something we can point to and be like, these are the people you want to control everything. Are, are you sure about that? <laughs> You sure about that? This guy, this only the the most deluded person in the world can can look at that guy with, in his little uh, Pacey Witter jacket. <laughs> sorry, that, sorry, Pacey. Um, and, and he just he just wants to be cool. So I know. So bad. So he just wants to be a cool, funny guy. And fuck, man, he whiffs a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> If he's if he's not surrounded by sycophants and his his blue check boys, like when he when he says that stuff and the room is dead silent, and then he says it again and gets a little polite laughter because everybody's so <laughs> uncomfortably awkward. Uh huh. Oh, it's wonderful. It really is. I mean, I don't know the that fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking guy. Yeah. Um, the other news I was going to say. Speaking of that fucking guys. Okay. Is uh, Mr. Henry Kissinger passed away, I believe. Since oh, my recording. God. <laughs> <laughs> Are you slapping yourself? Yes. For forgetting? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's anti-dystopia news. Uh, yeah, wonderful. I feel like I'm Beautiful. completely ripping off the the Some More News podcast because these are the two things they talked about on the last Oh, episode, yeah. I, which I, I watched earlier today, yeah. listened to. But, uh, I mean, they're two pretty funny things. So, yeah yeah uh, very funny it's been a funny week yeah very excited for the new uh for the new gender neutral restroom to open it's gonna be great uh also very excited to see uh so many respectable figures show up and act like he was a great man oh yeah great <laughs> wonderful wonderful guy i i've been very much uh, i spent a couple of days very much enjoying twitter where i saw god i should have I, I retweeted it, but it was days ago. I'd never be able to find it again. Um, uh, somebody somebody tweeted something about how Kissinger had to make a, a lot of hard... Like, first somebody tweeted, like, Kissinger was a fucking war criminal. Fuck him to hell. Yeah. And then somebody responded, he had to make a lot of tough choices. What would you have done? And the first person responded, not war crimes? <laughs> like, yeah. It's really... It's, I know... I know you can make it more complicated than that, but it doesn't have to be. Just no, it doesn't. Not war crimes. <laughs> just, I mean, yeah, it's just don't war crime people. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there might be some other difficult options you have to take, but that's inarguably the worst. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, you don't don't war crime. Uh, don't 
ethnic cleanse. I mean, these are like these are options that everybody is presented with. Yeah. Uh, my only solace, uh, pretty, pretty staunch atheist. But if I was wrong about all that, I'm gonna feel real stupid at the end as I'm as I'm dying at the standing in judgment. But at least I'll know. I'll know where he is, like with yeah. with no doubt whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, it, it's if, kind of a win win. If there if there is a judge, you know, if there is a final judgment, um, yeah. Regardless of uh, where I'm going, I mean, I'm almost certainly going to hell. Yeah. Uh, uh, but God, I know if there is anything, you know, if it's anything like fucking Dante, and there are levels, man, he is so far below me. Like just, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be great when we die, but yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so good dystopia news, I guess. Uh, yeah. What, what I thought when you said the, are you going, are you kissing yourself thing? Mm -hmm. Uh, what I thought you were referring to was the fact that kiss finally did their last show. Oh, I didn't have any idea of this and that is yeah. a dystopia. Yeah. Uh, it was in Madison square garden. Um, only let's see. Cause I saw them on their first leg of the retire of their retirement tour. Mm -hmm. Um, my first concert was Ozzy Osbourne's retirement tour. So yeah, yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Um, I, I saw them on the first leg of their retirement tour, which, uh, was also, and here's an interesting fact to very few people. It was also the last Allison chains show with Lane Staley. You this saw was, the, that was the last show. Yeah. Yeah. That was the very last show. The, uh, Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, the uh, the NPV Unplugged came out a few months later, but it's actually been taped beforehand. Um, wow. Yeah, so they've been on retirement tours since 1990. I believe it was six. Six, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> um, so and anyway, the reason I bring this up on our podcast is uh, since they have retired... They made, well, they, and by they, I mean Gene Simmons, mm -hmm. um, have made an announcement that they are simply ascending to a different plane and becoming digital kiss. And Ooh. they were somehow scanned in 15 billion points by industrial light and magic so mm. that there will be kiss holograms touring. Um, until the sun burns out, I assume. Neat. So, yep. By the way, uh, just so everybody knows, and uh, I am a wall from the Kiss Army. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't turn me in. I mean, I don't think I ever enlisted in that particular armed service. Yeah, fair enough. I had a few. I remember my dad had a best of Kiss tape. Um, when I was a kid that I really liked, there were a lot of songs I liked and I liked their, their vibe. I was a little metal head, you know, kiss has blood. Kiss has exactly one best of worth of songs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then nothing else they've ever did has ever interested me at all. No, no. Except for like half of that best of. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, Gene Simmons is just such a skeezy he Fuck. is a deeply unlikable person. Yeah, it really turned me off of yeah of the whole thing. And I, I don't know, maybe Ace Freely's cool. I don't know. Uh, I honestly have no fucking idea. <laughs> I don't either. He doesn't really talk, which is a sign that he's probably cool. Yeah, well, People certainly. People who just take their money and get the fuck out of the public eye, except to yeah. rock. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, glad we're keeping up and doing uh, th three weeks in a row of heavily talking about music, though. Yeah, seems seems smart for us. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your well-deserved criticism on Twitter, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We may have dropped a ball or two. Look, we, we fumbled that motherfucker pretty hard. <laughs> and I mean, I, 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 I up, though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could have benefited from having a real musician to talk to. And if only we knew one that mm -hmm. is, willing to come on our shows I if know. if only <laughs> we had a musician that we knew and liked to talk to and had appeared on maybe their podcast a few times and yeah. maybe they'd appeared on like i don't know what 
uh, five to ten of our episodes, then we'd be real comfortable with them. And to have them on, uh, just maybe it was one of our first listeners and we started podcasting. Yeah, maybe. maybe. God, if only we had one of those. Oh, well, we did it solo. (laughs) Uh, Um, Yeah, anyway. uh, What music? I I dig music. (laughs) I dig music. I've been thinking about that movie a lot lately. Almost Famous. I kind of want to rewatch it. I'm one, worried that it's not going to hold up. Um, I did. God, it's okay. At this point, I was going to say recently, but it has to have been five years ago because it was when I was in the other house. Um, mm-hmm. And it had some parts that were rougher than they were 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, but nothing that was like the fact that it's still a really good movie outweighs um, those parts where you're like, Oh yeah, this is, this is uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah. That, that movie like high fidelity really sang to my 21 or two year old. Yeah. White guy self. And I'm wondering how 45 year old white guy would think about it, but no way to find out. Yeah, it's impossible. Once movies air in the theaters, they're gone forever because this is 1970. Yeah, they certainly uh, are. Speaking of movies, do you want to recommend anything before we roll into this tight 90 Babylon 80 bullshit? Oh, yeah. Um, okay, I got one half recommendo. Um, it's called uh, Rustin. It's on Netflix. It stars uh, Domingo Coleman. Okay. Or Coleman Domingo? Domingo Coleman. Um, who was in Zola, if you saw that. That was the... That was the movie adapted from the Twitter thread of you want to know how this bitch and me fell out. Uh, you're you remember speaking this? gibberish to me. No. Okay. A uh, couple of strippers. Uh, well, this stripper gets recruited by another stripper to take a uh, trip to Florida. And it's crazy shit. Uh, great, great fucking movie from like two years ago. And mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody saw it. It was recommended to me by uh, Chris from, uh, uh, Astronomica. Okay. Um, but uh, Coleman Domingo playing uh, Bayard Rustin, who was one of the major organizers of the civil rights movement in the 1960s, um, who was a, a gay black man in the 60s. <laughs> oh, probably um, not the best time to be that. Wasn't the most comfortable, I- I'm given to assume. Uh, you... You will come across his name many, many times if you uh, were to reread the uh, um, American tabloid and the Cold 6000. Oh. Um, Speaking of things that probably didn't age well for 45-year-old me. Yeah, yeah. I I'm, I'm, swear to God, I am going to go back and reread those soon. Okay, let me know. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be roof fucking stoof. Real hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a good, like, and just about every respectable black actor working these days was in this movie. Um, so why only half recommendo? Because it falls into the tra- the biopic trap of mm. uh, they they do a little bit of like showing that, you know, he might have not been the best guy at every aspect of his life. But it's so focused on this one triumph that it sort of becomes a uh, hey geography, um, uh, uh, like a recommendation for sainthood. Okay. The yeah. central, the central performance is fucking great. Um, Glenn Turman is fucking great. The guy who plays uh, Martin Luther King in it is also really good, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But half recommend out. Like if you're. You know, if you want something to kind of put on and like feel kind of sad, like, oh, shit, things were bad, but also kind of triumphant about it. Great. It was uh, produced by uh, uh, Barack and Michelle. So should that's we call the those, vibe you're going to get. Should we call those a Rekka meh no. Oh, that's not a bad idea. No, don't. Uh, Do it's you not a good idea. Try to say it. It feels really gross. Rekka meh do. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't work. No. You got a recommendo? I do. Speaking of things that'll make you feel sad. Okay. Uh, I Saturday, my wife wanted to watch a sad romantic movie, so she put on a little film called Past Lives, and I watched it with her, and it was very good and very sweet and very sad. 
Uh, what, who is in that movie? Why do I know that name? Uh, Greta Lee uh, is the oh, only I know one her. of yeah. any okay. famousness. Then some Korean people. Okay. John Magaro, I guess, has a role in it. Yeah, it's just a romance about childhood sweethearts in Korea and they got okay, separated yeah. and came back together and separated again and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I must've just seen that on, uh, Netflix or, you know, something like that, which is, but yeah, I like Greta Lee. I mean, yeah, she's great. She's awesome. Yeah. And it's a good movie. Just, you know, ah. it's, it's more for our Dawson's Creek set than our, <laughs> Mm-hmm. I tech low life set. Okay. Any of you out there that are still lurking around is sticking with us. You might like it. I, I do have a recommendo for it's not exactly cyberpunk, but I do have a recommendo for those people. Okay. Wow. wow. What do you, you mean? Know, those, people? those people? Well, the cyberpunk people, the cyberpunkins. Yeah. We, we started that cyberpunkins. We did. We never yes. Came back to it. Okay. Uh, for all you cyberpunkins out there. Um, <laughs> Fuck, I that's worse in my mouth than recommendos. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Blue Eye Samurai on Netflix. Oh, yeah, I, uh, uh, looks good. Yeah, I that was recommended, I think, by Jeff from Astronomica. Um, it's a very cool anime. I mean, like, it, it's a lot, it's incredibly cool looking. It's got a I'm halfway into the first season, a little more, maybe. I think I'm on episode five. Um, has a fairly cool plot um, and some really good voice actors. And the lead is Maya Erskine, who... I know who she is. Yeah, she was on uh, Pen15, which yeah. we both liked a lot. Also, something coming. I recently saw a TikTok about her. What was it? Something with Donald Glover. What mm. is it? What is... I can't remember it. Never mind. Let's move on. Um, I, similarly, I was, I've been started that scavenger show on HBO and oh, yeah. speaking of animated stuff and it's, it's interesting too. That, that show is real fucking good. I, I liked that a hell of a lot. I have watched so much animated shit in the past like year compared to where I was. I know it's, it's been, <laughs> it's been a lot recently. I also started that, uh, Monarch. Oh yeah. Fucking monster show that you yeah. recommended and it's kind of fuck i kind of like it i'm not we took a it's, break recently it, it's not gr- i mean it's not a great show by any means it's just but a, a good cast man like the cast is fun to watch yeah yeah i mean uh, you know you get it, outside of everything else uh you got kurt and wyatt russell fucking dicking around <laughs> like yeah <laughs> And everybody else is also like, you know, I pretty much really like just about every bit of casting they've done. Um, uh, yeah, hard to, yeah, I can't hard to say of, no to that. I can't think of any any character I don't I'm not interested in that show. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, like I said, we'll see. I'm only like three, three or four episodes in. But Oh, yeah. And uh, this most recent episode had uh, the screen cap, which most encapsulated my interests. Oh, my God, Josh, you should. <laughs> You should post that on Twitter just I, since we're talking about it. I really should. Actually, I will, um, just in case you're not on Twitter, in the first minute of the most recent episode, which I think was four, there is a close-up, out-of-focus copy of the trade paperback of Neuromancer by William Gibson, the one that came out. Oh, yeah. The one you own because the one yeah. you loaned to me. Yeah, the one that came out in like 98-ish. The one you loaned um, to me six or seven times and I never read until we did a podcast together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, with a uh, with an attractive woman in the background out of focus and then the subtitle at the top of the screen, Baby Got Back Playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like all you needed to do was add like a gin and tonic, a cigarette and a cup of coffee and like... The, hey, what are, what are we doing? What am I doing in reality? Yeah, pretty much. I think it nailed you. It really did. I felt seen. <laughs> that's always that's important. Yeah. Representation. Yeah. Uh, all right. We've recommended far too much. Too much. OK, you want to talk about a baby long a day? Baby long a day. I do. I've uh, actually been looking forward to talking about it. I don't know why. Uh, what a what a fucking movie. It's 
It's talk about a bowl. <laughs> it is. Um, first, what was your opinion of the film overall? Uh, this movie is bad, <laughs> but not for like, uh, not for easily definable reasons. Like, it's not like you're going like, oh, these special effects are bad or, oh, all these stunts are fucking terrible or this acting is bad or anything like that. It is so much less than the sum of its parts should allow for. <laughs> that is absolutely true. That's a good <laughs> way of describing it. Um, I, I might disagree. Like, I was watching this movie. For, for one thing, it's short. It's like 90 minutes. And you, yes. you're about 80 minutes in and you're like, there's got to be like, <laughs> we're going to be missing a lot. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, uh, I would say I was about the halfway point and I was actually quite into it. Um, I was, I really liked the first half of this movie actually. And uh, the thing I... The, I, th most... I think the first half of this movie writes a bunch of fucking checks that it cannot goddamn cash <laughs> absolutely yeah and that's why the movie's bad because it sets up far too much but if if you just kind of look at it like like an like a shadow run or like some type of rpg thing where you've sure. got badass mercenary meets up with warrior monk to save girl that's pretty cool and they yeah. go to all these cool places and shit's going down uh they get on a submarine that's pretty neat yeah <laughs> And then they get to America and shit goes out. It goes nowhere. Yeah. Um, but I was on board. And the thing I want to compare it to is Elysium. Um, sure. Which is, I feel like, what this movie wants to be. But because yeah, Elysium sure. is a fully realized yeah. film that is uh, so fucking bland when, it, when it's finished, right? Yeah. And I feel like that's what, uh, what's his name, Matthew Kasovitz wanted yeah to make but i i don't i don't like it feels like it had a lot more potential than elysium and it failed a lot more it tripped on its own dick many many times yeah but do you do you agree about the potential of it or am like, i just it, I, I i'm i'm honestly very curious to read the book that this is based on yeah uh, it's called babylon babies i guess um mm -hmm. because yeah, I honestly, like, I can think of many, many ways to make this movie better in, like, after the fact. Yeah. Um, it has, but it does have so much cool shit. I mean, like, yeah, the, the fucking using a goddamn Soviet submarine to smuggle people under the Arctic Circle. Pretty neat. In, into the U.S. is such a cool fucking idea. Ha like... Just even visually, having uh, one of those fucking God, I can't remember the name of the uh, the Russian helicopter. Having a helicopter pick up a Chaika, mm -hmm. uh, a gauze Chaika limousine, and then like fly it multiple hundreds of miles with a magnet on the roof, and then set it down at its destination is great. Great, well, like that's uh, the stuff that wrote me in. Yeah. Ah, uh, not the Virgin Mary stuff, not the the psychic girl stuff. That yeah. stuff was was lame. Although a little psychicness does, I, I can get intrigued by that. Her, her yeah. like knowing that the explosion was coming is pretty neat. Yeah. But um, once it got into the religious stuff, I was I was checking out. But yeah, that stuff it sets up in the beginning, the sepultura cage fight scene. Yeah, yeah, the whole you know early 2000s mandatory uh, loud music nightclub scene that all of these movies have. With parkour. Don't With forget parkour. the parkour. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, yeah, it just did not... Like, Elysium didn't have any of that stuff. Elysium yeah, painted it, a dystopia. It just, I don't know, this made it... This Maybe this was more f of a fun dystopia that we want when we're watching Cyberpunk. Which, by well, the way, why is this not on the Cyberpunk list? Because this checks all the boxes as far as i can tell um if you give up after the first two thirds of the movie it doesn't have any <laughs> true maybe Remember, that's because got through this the cyberpunk stuff doesn't come in until the last third of the movie because remember vin diesel has to die <laughs> yeah but even even without the cyber arms and legs i feel like it still should 
be on the lists, but it's not, it's not, at least it's not yeah. on the overarching list we usually look at. Yeah. Which includes stuff like Bicentennial Man. Look, maybe that's the most cyberpunk movie ever. Uh, maybe I, we haven't seen I, it. Yet. I could not tell you. I have never seen it. It looks pa- like I don't even know if I've seen a trailer for that. The poster looked painful twenty five years ago. The poster is what has been burned into my brain. Yeah, but if it's really cyberpunk, we'll get to it. We we will. We. Nevertheless, um, let's let's do some recapping. I think this one's ripe for recapping. Oh boy! If you have prepared for that, oh oh, I have. Oh, good deal. Uh, you took notes. Uh oh. Yes, I watched this movie twice. Um, oh my god! <laughs> once to watch it, and then once to do a note run through. Um, I'm really glad it was 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Me too. So, although maybe it'd have been better if it was. 120. I don't know. I I can't say. I, if I knew more French, I might have a better idea of that. I know. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Vin Diesel is playing Vin Diesel in a movie whose name is Turup. Turup. Yes. Um, which is a name a character can have? Yep. We... Uh, Love properties with weird named characters. No, no, no further comment. <laughs> um, and at the very beginning, he's given a pretty cool monologue. He's a mercenary, you see. And his rule is that life's simple. Kill or be killed. Don't get involved and always finish the job. Yeah, that's <sighs> true, I guess. Um, I really, I had seen the opening scene of him like walking and then confronting that Notably, Gun salesman. notably not the opening scene. Oh, was that not the opening scene? I forgot until I watched it again. The opening scene is him getting blown up by the missile. <laughs> like it starts in media res as the missile is racing towards his chest in New York. And the voice of getting a drink. I don't remember that at all. What the fuck? Uh, I was totally shocked the second time I went through it. I was like, oh, didn't remember this at all because then it the movie forgets about it for 85 minutes. Wow, so they, I hate it when movies do that, not going to lie. I Look, if there are plenty of movies that do that well, this is not one. Um, yes, the uh, walking down the street in Russia, in the rain, at a poncho with gun markets, great. With like that that uh, loud rap music, or I don't yeah. know if it's rap, but some type of electronic music going behind it. Uh, yeah. I saw that on TikTok, actually, and I was like, this looks cyberpunk, I should... Yeah. look into what this is and i only realized it when we saw this movie yeah um, yeah he uh shakes down a guy because he sold him a broken 20 dollar gun i guess uh yeah one of the one of the guys who's surrounding him has a franchi spas so that's pretty cool that's classic classic cyberpunk gun. bullshit do you still remember i, I believe it's 8s oh. damage oh, yes. on the franchi spas <laughs> oh yes burst fire baby <laughs> <laughs> um shout out to eddie <laughs> and Dawnfire, and all the shadow run nerds yeah hey maybe not right now is the best time to do this uh vin diesel is bad at this movie right i think i think that is hard to say um to kasovitz would say that he is yeah definitely um, got that from the from he, the doc <sighs> He's doing exactly Vin Diesel in 2008. I mean, like, it's one of those things where, I don't know, it's, you know, if you hired John Wayne for this movie, he'd give a John Wayne performance. And it's sort of a thing where you can't fault him for it. Yeah. Because Vin Diesel was given the exact performance here that he did in fucking Fast and Furious and Triple X and half his other vehicles that Riddick uh pitch black yeah pitch black uh pitch perfect pitch perfect he was great in that dude have you ever when he did the cup song oh my god have you have you ever watched his karaoke videos no dude Vin Diesel loves to fucking sing and he is not good at it I love that about but he has passion like his whole house is kitted out 
for fucking care. Like every room in his house is hooked up to a fucking karaoke thing. He's wandering from room to room with a handheld mic fucking singing ballads. Um, it is I love that. like wildly charming in the way that you're like, man, this guy is just so fucking into this guy loves to sing. <laughs> he was also an admitted D and D fan before that yeah. became the cool oh, thing. Long, for yeah. To do. Yeah. So, he, he was a known D and D fan, like circa boiler room. <laughs> right. There's always been a, a place in my heart for Vin Diesel because of that. Yeah. Um, that being said, I don't think he's a, fit for this movie no i he is definitely not a fit for this movie but they did hire him to do it <laughs> yeah i mean you can't blame i'm not blaming him yeah I'll put it that way uh um, i will say his accent in russian is a uh, fucking atrocious <laughs> i'm sure it is he is doing the russian equivalent of uh yeah and can i get some more jalapenos on that <laughs> tortilla <laughs> I mean, it is bad. <laughs> I I did also glean from the doc that uh, it was not Kasovitz. He was not Kasovitz's choice. In fact, Kasovitz didn't want him at all. Yeah. And it was kind of forced on him by 20th Century Fox. Yeah. Um, and that is a through line throughout the entire production. Yes. Um, I believe his first choice was Vincent Casal. Um, Who is that? I must look him up. He is a French actor. Um, that you have definitely seen in things. He was in Ocean's 12. Um, uh, I can see that. And he is incredibly charming. And also he can be like, he's been in a bunch of things where he's like, uh, uh, the dude is a really good fucking actor and can just turn on a fucking dime. Mm -hmm. um, he was in uh, Matt, uh, Matteo Kasovitz's first film, I think it was his first film, called La Haine, uh, yeah. which came out in like 96, I think, 95 maybe. Um, and it's about a group of friends in Paris who, uh, Vincent Casal is the main one, their buddy gets uh, killed by the cops or like put in the hospital by the cops in a coma. And it's, the, it's one of those like uh, social dramas that... You see usually the French and the English kind of do where yeah. uh, and it is fuck it like it is great. I I was so shocked when I looked this movie up and like did the first tiny bit of research and found out that Kasovitz directed line because I remember that as being a really good fucking movie like it. It won a bunch of fucking awards when it came out. and It was one of the very few. French films that like kind of made it over the water and somebody in Emporia, Kansas was aware of it and like hunted it down. Yeah. Way to dox yourself. Yeah. No shit. Um, uh, 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 Vincent Cassell would have been really good. <laughs> I agree. Just uh, from what I, what little I can remember of him and looking at him, he looks like a lot cooler for the part. I, it's also worth mentioning that uh, Kasovitz, like he has done a lot of good things. He's not a bad director. I mean, I don't know. Uh, what else? He did the Fifth Element. Like no, Amelie. he didn't. He did not. He acted in the Fifth oh, Element he acted. anomaly. Okay, I was looking at the. Yeah, I was misreading IMDb because it's bad now. No, yeah, he uh, he directed Gothica. All right, Lupus on to I knew that. Come on, what am I thinking? French yeah. people all blend together. Gothica is really bad. I have not seen it, but based on my understanding, yes, very bad. I saw it in a theater with uh, Doug Benson making fun of it, like oh, live. Like he yeah. was, he came to Kansas City and made fun of it yeah. at, uh, back when um, the Alamo Draft House was still around before they uh, assaulted all those women. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, um, I think. Oh, uh, I believe I saw the Crimson Rivers. Uh, which was another French film he made with uh, yes, Vincent Cassel and list. Jean Reno. Yeah. And I think that was pretty good, although I don't know, 20, 20 years ago. I, I do not have strong thoughts about that like I do Lane. Uh, no. Lane, by the way, is spelled L A H I or H A I N E. It's French. Yeah, it, means, right. it means hatred. Ooh. Yeah. Well, eh. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, 
this probably would have been a better movie with Vincent Cassell. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if it had starred Vincent Cassell, um, it never would have been released in English, probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it just, it sounds like it was it problematic. Made. Uh, yeah. 20th Century Fox wouldn't have made it. Yeah. And other aspects of the production were problematic enough that it would have been a disaster anyway. Yeah. Uh, although, you know, you're always curious. It just, Vin Diesel yeah. seems so out of place. I don't hate the guy. I don't even hate what he's doing. It just seems out of place. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's, it's weird. We it, I mean, probably hurry. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Vin Diesel's a mercenary. He's hanging out. He's uh, cooking a rabbit for dinner in his apartment in a flak vest. Cooking uh, a nice, like this guy's got cooking skills. They, yeah, he's not just a mercenary. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. Um, and you know, just in a flak vest eating dinner. Um, yeah. And then treat some, yourself. It's all about yeah. self care when you're a merc. It really is. Um, self care and family. Um, it's a different movie. Is it? I don't know. I've never seen any of them. <laughs> um, so some mercenaries show up, and uh, can you imagine if we did our other podcast idea, Fast Five? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How much Vin Diesel we would have to stomach every oh, day for so the much. rest of our life, and it would be so good. <laughs> All right, it would be so great. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, I got a soft spot in my heart for the guy. I don't know if I want to look at his face every fucking week for the next three to five years. Hey, on the upside in those movies, he's shot better and more sanely. There are some like they are doing some shit in this movie, just like lighting wise that uh, I honestly initially thought, is this racist the way they're shooting this? (laughs) Because there are some scenes where he he is shot to look as white as humanly possible. Yeah, he does look pretty white. Isn't I don't. Well, my wife and I were talking about what ethnicity he is, but I think it's still ambiguous. He's tight uh, about it. Uh, yeah, I believe he is. Uh, uh, I'm I'm given to understand that he is some flavor of mixed race. Um, you know, he but boy, they really shoot him to look real fucking white. In well, big portions of this movie. Surprise Michelle Yeoh made the cut. God, the girl is the whitest white girl. Oh, I know. They yeah. could possibly find. Yeah. Yeah, they pulled her out of a, of a convent. I mean. Yeah. In okay, so, so, yeah. She sounded Icelandic to me. I swear I was like, a, I was listening to Bjork the whole time she was talking. She does. Anyway. Yeah, she talks also very fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so some mercenaries show up and take him to meet... Uh, a guy named Gorski, uh, totally non-problematic uh, actor, Gerard Depardieu. Never who, heard of him. Who uh, has this cool APC with like video screens on the inside, so it looks like Windows. Does was there prosthetics on Gerard Depardieu, or does he just look like that? Honestly, I either my, answer you give, I will accept without question. <laughs> my first thought was, are these prosthetics? <laughs> And then my second thought was, how much of an alcoholic is he? I yeah. have no idea. Okay. I think maybe there were prosthetics, but I, like, if somebody told me, no, not a bit, I would completely believe them. Exactly. Uh, he is looking fucking roof. He's like um, 15 years ago. Yeah. Did he die? No, he is alive. And uh, last I recall... Facing numerous, uh, you know, numerous fun Me Too charges. Yeah, I'm looking at a picture of him, and I don't think they're prosthetics. Yeah, he, like, he... It looks like Gerard Depardieu from 1992 uh, is wearing the same prosthetics that Colin Farrell was wearing to play the Penguin in the Batman movie. Mm, Yeah, pretty good sum up. Yeah, um... So but probably not wearing any prosthetics. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so he he hires Vin Diesel to deliver a girl to New York in six days. And Vin can't go back to the U.S. because he's on a terrorist watch list. Right. But Depardieu gives him a passport, which is some injectable thing. Cool and cyberpunk. 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's the only cyberpunk thing in the first two thirds of this movie. Um, the map. Oh, the map is cool. I mean, yeah, the map yeah. was. I thought the map was very cool. I thought it was yeah. a cool effect. Oh, yeah, stupid and uh, useless to actually invent, but for a movie, looked really neat. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was really neat, and I was surprised. Well, we'll get to that in like five minutes. Um, yeah, let's get there. Okay, so um, he drops off Vin Diesel uh, next to, like, on the side of the road. Um, a helicopter flies overhead with a searchlight, drops a fucking gauze Chica limousine from, like, the 1970s, and it's fully kitted out for Escape from New York. Like, it has fucking yeah. uh, um, fencing, like, yeah. welded over the windows and shit. Vin gets into this fucking limo. The like heli- this, this was so like that's why when you say it's not cyberpunk at the beginning, I, I don't buy it. This, this was so Johnny mnemonic. Like this just uh, okay, yeah, I, I can see that. It's it's definitely missing the cyber in the first. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But it gets there. Yeah. Um, then the helicopter picks it up again with like a big magnet, like you'd see in a junkyard on a crane. You know, science bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've seen the Breaking Bad's. Um, and then flies him, I don't know, hundreds of miles. <laughs> could be could be thousands. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Um, it's into Central Asia or Central Eurasia is the only way it's described. Um, and drops him off like 10 feet outside of a monastery or a convent. Um, and it was like, I, I wrote in my notes that it should have been more interesting. The concept was really cool, but then when he's in the car and the helicopter is supposedly lifting him up and you know flying him through the sky like all you have is vin diesel sitting in the back of a car and there's not even any camera movement or anything to indicate it's moving yeah what is he he checks yeah the there's radio like, yeah there's like an empty bottle of vodka and yeah yeah um but the visual of this helicopter <laughs> pulling this fucking limo across the sky is just it's beautiful like yeah it's neat yeah i I don't i wish the movie had paid off that like i would watch an entire movie of the payoff for that i don't know how but slams it into a mountain and the end (laughs) yeah sure great (laughs) um so they drop him at this convent michelle yo comes out uh, and we're all like holy shit fucking michelle yo this movie is about to kick into high gear God, once again, not really delivered. Like Michelle Yeoh no. rules so fucking much. Yeah. And they they just didn't give her like she fights a little bit, but she's Michelle Yeoh. She should be fucking destroying. This is she gets uh, this like post crouching tiger hidden dragon Michelle Yeoh. Like we knew. Everybody yeah. knew. Yeah. This she gets literally somewhere on the order of about ten seconds of kung fu in this movie. And most of that's chopped up, so you can't even hardly see what she's doing. It is such a waste. I get vibes from the uh, fucking Kasovitz doc that some of that didn't make it, just from the way she was talking. I, yeah, I have to assume that that's the case. Because she's one of the characters, ironically, the Chinese language character is the one you can understand the most yeah. out of most of the people talking in that doc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it is it is like, a waste because it's she's perfectly casted for that. Yeah, role. she's a uh, fuck it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like Warrior Nun, Michelle Yeoh. But I mean, yeah. you know, you don't. There's there's one name on your list, and it's Michelle Yeoh. Go hire her. You're done. <laughs> I do think with what she was given, I think she's the best she, acting in the show. I think that's a totally fair fair assessment. I love her so much and have, well, since I saw yeah. her Crouching Tiger, and, and, she's been like top tier actors for me of all time. Yeah. Why wouldn't she be for fuck's sake? She's Michelle Yeoh. I yeah. mean, <laughs> like I, there's no way to complain about it. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Michelle Yeoh Ye- lays out these rules. Um, first of all, it turns out that she is going to be traveling with the girl to protect the girl from the world. Um, she's got a couple of rules like, uh, I go everywhere with her. We're here to protect her from the world. No foul language. Um, and that's pretty much it. And Vin Diesel's like, I got a rule too. And it's, uh, fuck you. Fucking cunt face. (laughs) The the earth (laughs) will tell you what I don't know. 
Yeah. I think I'm confusing <laughs> Vin Diesel and Elon Musk, but you know. Uh, honestly, I think Vin Diesel or Elon Musk is trying to model himself after Vin Diesel. You're probably right. Yeah. So, <laughs> that fucking fur line, fur collar jacket. I know. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so this is the point at which we get a cool electronic map. He opens up the trunk of the limo and finds a map case. And I'm like, holy shit, that's an actual map case. I haven't seen one of those for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then he opens it up and pulls out a map. And the map is fucking Google Maps, except it's a big fold out. Google <laughs> <Yeah>. Maps. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Highly impractical, but deeply impractical. <laughs> looks neat. A really cool effect for a movie. Um, maybe the winning effect for this movie. Might be. Um, yeah, Vin's rude to the girl and Michelle Yeoh. Big um, and then we get this cut to a, an older woman getting some kind of cosmetic surgery. Can we just skip all the parts that involve her? I would love to. Honestly, we maybe could. I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, okay, so she's called Your Highness. She's apparently the leader of a cult called the Noahites. And... Um, this girl, whose name is Aurora, will soon reveal our miracle to the world. Sure. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so uh, then we go back to Vin and Michelle Yeoh and uh, uh, what is her name? Is it Michelle Thierry? Uh, yeah. No, no. Melanie maybe? Thierry? Melanie, it sounds better. Yeah. Um, Aurora And they're going to get on a train to Vladivostok. um, And they go through this big market um, where there's all sorts of shit happening. Um, And she's getting a firsthand account of the world. Yeah, there are clone tigers and police forces and parkour guys on the roofs. Yeah, typical, you know, dystopia shit as imagined in 2008. (laughs) Yeah, it's very, it's, yeah, you you could have inserted this shot into Johnny Mnemonic or, I don't know, fucking Ghost in the Shell. Well, it would have been done much better in both of those, but sure. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you could have, you could have stuck this concept in. Um, And the girl starts freaking out and is like, no, you can't go that way. We can't go that way. We will die. Oh, my God. And I I am Bjork. Yeah, and. She is actually kind of playing the uh, Matt. What is that fucking improv guy's name? Matt Besser. Besser. Yes, the Matt Besser oh, version of York. I, where did I pull that fucking name out of? Uh, ten years ago, fucking comedy oh, bang yeah, bang. He does do Bjork. You're right. Yeah. That he, that was one of his comedy bang bang characters. Yeah. That, yeah. Maybe that's why I made that connection. Yeah, I bet it is because that's I've what I was. Heard him play Bjork more than I've actually heard Bjork talk. That that is exactly what I was going for. Like, yes, he is playing Matt Besser playing Bjork. Okay, well, look that up if you don't know what we're talking about. You probably don't because that was a long time ago. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and then a bomb goes off the way that they were going to go, but she stopped them from going. So I don't know. Maybe there's something spooky. Ooh. Yeah, she's got a little sixth sense. Yeah, and then we see, and then we cut to them being observed through surveillance cameras, which seem to have facial recognition. And you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's happening. That happens a lot. And then, um, the French guy from the second and fourth matrix movies, uh, a guy named Lambert Wilson, uh, who played the Merovingian, I think in the matrix Mm -hmm. films. Yep. Um, (laughs) is looking all weird in a fucking, metal neck brace and says my daughter must not be harmed the noah lights will be watching (laughs) and then it cuts away and you're like what the fuck (laughs) and then vin and aurora and michelle yo get on snowpiercer (laughs) yeah i guess (laughs) is that cyberpunk Honestly, not really. it's not it's very dystopian. cyber. It's definitely dystopy. It's definitely punky. It's definitely punky. Uh, we yeah. could probably make a case for Snowpiercer. Yeah. Okay, let's come back to that in the future. All right. Um, okay, so they get to an apocalyptic Vladivostok refugee camp. And uh, one one fun thing about this movie is every time you go to a new location, and boy, there are too many of them. A lot of them. For a 90-minute movie? Um, uselessly too many of them. Yes. 
uh, you see like a little readout on the screen where it says like Vladivostok uh, refugee camp, 800,000 refugees. And then like the number creeps up while the screen's on it. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's just a nice little, uh, you know, it's a nice little cyber. It's a nice little sci-fi thing and eh, whatever. Uh, so they go into, uh, they go into a classic cyberpunk nightclub, uh, all sorts of fucking scaffolding and cage fighting and go-go dancers. Lots of, uh, CRT monitor screens. Yes, exactly. Um, they're there to find Vin's friend, a guy named Finn, who's played by Mark Strong in one of his least accomplished wigs. (laughs) <laughs> you know he's a bad guy because he's got like the blonde guy I, job like man i love mark strong i will watch him and about anything holy shit he is he has suffered from some fucking wig crimes over his career dude yeah. has dude has been bald since like 96 is maybe the first time i saw him in uh our friends our friends in the north which is a bbc miniseries he looks like a badass bald though. Like, yeah, he looks why great. Put a bald. Wig on him? I do not know, <laughs> but he has, yeah, he has been the victim of many wig crimes throughout his career <laughs> for no apparent reason. It would be fun to like do an expose on who's been the biggest victim, victim of wig crimes. Uh, you know, Michelle, uh, uh, oh, Michelle Williams. Williams. <laughs> My oh, brain boy. said Michelle. Because I'm so much yeah. in Vin Diesel, my brain said Michelle Yo, nope, mm-hmm. Michelle Rodriguez, nope. And then finally, I got yeah. to the third Michelle, Michelle Williams. That's tough. Uh, ooh, honestly, just a one to one comparison, like year by year, break down her next to Mark Strong. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, he's had probably more time, but not, a lot not more. that, not that much. I mean, because yeah. what she started as, she started young. Like, what ninety eight species. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I doubt she's wearing a wig in Species, but maybe. Yeah, I, I don't. Um, Is that her first movie? I think so. Huh. I, I I could very well be wrong, but that feels like it was uh, Dawson's Creek trivia let, nestled in the back of my brain. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anywho, so <laughs> we meet up with Mark Strong, who's Vin's friend. Um, we're gonna go. Cr- we're gonna cross on the boat to America. Um, and I feel like the Mark strong character, sorry, uh, didn't need to be in the movie other than like just a fixer in Vladivostok. Like, I don't know why he came with them other than he, uh, absolutely did not accept the only reason that character exists in this movie is so that Vin Diesel can say the line in 20 minutes from now, never trust anybody. Well, and also that if he tells them that he would kill yeah. the girl if if she was carrying a virus. Uh, yeah. A virus? like A viral f- bomb. I guess yeah. that was just a red herring? That never really... Uh, yeah. No, it didn't. Okay. No, no, it really didn't. Uh, anyway, uh, the parkour guys show up. <laughs> yeah. They parkour, do. Parkouring about the club. Um, and they try to buy Vin off with a million bucks in a duffel bag. Yeah. Um, and he's like, nah! and they do a fight and Michelle gets about seven seconds of Kung Fu in yeah, and it it's all, or something. it's all shaky cam and two, the shots are too quick. So you don't actually get to see Michelle Yeoh doing Kung Fu. They're really bad fight scenes. I can't, uh, like it I can't it, express enough how one bad of, they were. One of the things that I liked the most about that documentary, fucking Kosovitz, mm-hmm. is that you could see, like, in the documentary, there were some shots of them rehearsing it, and you're like, oh, I would have loved to have seen that in the film. Hmm. Well, you heard, I mean, I don't know if you heard it, but I saw one part of it, uh, the, the director, Blanken, Matthew K- Kosovitz, Kosovitz. Um, he is yelling at Vin fight faster. This is too Uh slow. Fight faster. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they tried to speed that up with editing and it just makes it look like shit. I I, I don't think it was, you know, the fight coordinators or the actors that made it look like shit. That that fight coordinator was pretty goddamn hilarious in the (laughs) docs. They also, they were all bitching about Vin Diesel. He showed up untrained and 
It was, mm-hmm. I guess, hard to direct, but um, he's Vin Diesel. He doesn't really have to do much. He looks the part, right? Yeah, yeah. Like fighting in movies is kind of his thing. Yeah, unfortunately, they hired him to do the wrong kind of fights in this movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's such a like the initial impulse is to dog Vin Diesel because when you watch the documentary, he kind of comes off as the bad guy from what I can. I I got like, I don't know. I, I got I definitely got that Kasovitz did not care for him, did not care for him and wanted him to be the bad guy. And it seemed like uh, Melanie Thierry didn't care for him either. Uh, yes, I also got that. But on the other hand, there was enough of like there were enough shots of Vin Diesel and like I like feel he gave like a shit. He was he was yeah. not like fucking off. He was trying yeah. to make a good movie. You could tell that from the doc. So yeah, you could really tell he was fucking trying. Like he wasn't like getting in people's faces in in the documentary made by Matteo Kasovitz. Yeah. So he could have been. He didn't. I don't know. It's it, it should have it should have been really easy to get footage that would have made Vin Diesel look like a complete fucking asshole. Right, right. Uh, he, if he, he was, really. uh, yeah, if he was a complete fucking asshole, it should have been simple. Um, yeah. But maybe we're uh, too big of De- Vin Diesel stands here at High Tech Low Life. Possibly. We should, we should be harder on him. I don't know. May- maybe. I, I don't know. But I, I don't think he was quite as much of a villain as Kasovitz seemed to. Uh, yeah. And the fight coordinator didn't seem to like him much either. Uh, Yes, that is true. I'm not sure if the fight coordinator liked anybody but Michelle Yeoh. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. (laughs) I mean, to be, but to be fair, literally, if you're in a room with Michelle Yeoh and anybody else, everybody else is going to fucking pale in comparison. Yeah, she's the one you want to be hanging out with and talking to for sure. Yeah, especially if you're a fight coordinator. Shit. You're like, hey, tell me about Super Cop again. (laughs) What about Super Cop? Three and Super Cop Two. <laughs> uh, why out of order? I don't know. Okay, just spice things up. Yeah. Okay, so the, there's a big fight in this nightclub. Um, Vin is punching people. I mean, that's because that's what Vin Diesel does. Um, these guys are parkouring around. Michelle Yeoh gets to do a little bit of kung fu. Um, in the chaos, Aurora gets thrown into the cage with this. Big dude, crazy looking cage fighter guy. That previously there was like things saying <sighs> you can win all this money if you can survive three minutes in the cage with yeah Conan the Destroyer or whatever the fuck his name was. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and uh, he's like gently touching her face. And then... Twas beauty yeah. soothed the beast. Yeah, exactly. Um uh, or is it her psychic powers? Oh, no. There, it was definitely the whole time, like, as soon as she enters the room, they're drawn to each other. Yeah. Um, Just like the animals, because he's an animal. He's a yeah. beast. Yeah. Uh, then Vin Diesel gets in the cage and really fights the guy and beats him up. And to a Sepultura whole, song. To, uh, was that Dead Embryonic Cells? I didn't actually look up what it was, but it was definitely one I'd heard before. Yeah, I think that it was. Make sense. I think it was dead embryonic cells. Uh, <laughs> I heard it, and I remembered you'd mentioned it, but I'd forgotten already. Yeah, and so I got, uh, I got really Pumped. excited. I get, I get excited when I hear Sepultura in the wild. It's I I agree. It's it's got a specific flavor that like it doesn't. The same thing doesn't happen to me when uh, Slayer or yeah, uh, it's a special kind of thrash metal. Yeah. Uh, from the first, what was that movie? It wasn't Sepultura, it was, but it was Max Cavalera, a nail, nail bomb. bomb. Um, uh, and a movie you would not to expect, die for. Yeah, with Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Correct. Uh, as like a teacher that some students wanted to bone or something. I don't remember. Yeah, I barely remember, but yes, she but was. When you hear Max Cavalera's voice and you're a young metalhead, it just makes you happy. Yeah, and harden your pants because I think you get to see Nicole Kidman's boobs in that movie. So. Yeah. As a 15 year old kid. And it was likely. 1995. So <laughs> yeah. pretty exciting. <laughs> Nail bomb and boobs. <laughs> Two of life's great things. 
Yeah. I guess. <laughs> okay, back on plot. <laughs> um, so uh, the whole time that Vin is fighting this guy, um, and he eventually wins, no surprise, because Vin Which is... Which apparently the guy really fucked up his knee during the... Yeah, uh, I believe, based on what I could get uh, of the French they were talking about in the uh, documentary, I think he dislocated his kneecap, which has happened to me. Um, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the exact response. It's fall over and start going. Ah. Yeah, it's it, it it's, looks painful in the, it's in no, the scene they have it. No good feeling at all. Um, so apparently that fight didn't get finished as strongly as maybe they would have hoped. Yeah. Um, but the whole time Aurora is like, no, no, don't hurt him. He's trying to save me. Uh, and there's no real payoff for that. Vin just chokes him out. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. I, I guess he killed him with that choke. Yeah. Uh, actually, I th- easily stopped. I think uh, as they're leaving, you see people helping him up. Oh, that'd so be nice. he might have just passed out, but it's not like that's deep background stuff. Yeah, I was looking and I didn't yeah. see it. So it must have been deep or may- or maybe I misinterpreted something uh, not important. Um, so then I guess it's the next morning. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, OK, so there's this chase scene with more parkour shit. I forgot about this. It's dumb. Um, I don't even remember it. And there's a crowd of like 10 fucking parkour guys who have Aurora and Vin Diesel is chasing them and picks up an picks up an M16 off of a guard or something and shoots one of them. And they're like, OK, I guess he's serious. We'll leave her here. Bye. And take off. Oh, yeah, that's right. She actually goes willingly with them. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, they give up really quick, which is, I guess, kind of telegraphing to the audience that they're not the bad guys. Yeah, um, the, they, they say that they're working for her father. Yeah. Um, and Which she thought was dead. Yeah, she thought, yeah, she thought he was dead. Um, don't worry about this. None of it makes any sense. So Poor matters. Pays off at all, really. No. Um, yeah, uh, so then it's like the next morning, and... They're going to go get on, quote, the boat. Um, and Mark Strong, Vin Diesel, Michelle Yeoh, and Melanie Thierry are walking across the ice uh, with a, at the Bering Strait with a bunch of other fucking people. And another very cool thing that, like, is not paid off in any sort of interesting way we're like, okay, so they're walking across this ice. They're going to get on a boat to be smuggled into America. Mm-hmm. Fine, whatever. And then a fucking submarine breaks through the ice. And they're being smuggled on a goddamn Russian nuclear submarine. Yeah, it's it's very cool because they're standing on like a plane. And you're like, where's the ocean? Where's mm-hmm. this boat? And then I got it before the sub came up. I like realized it's going to be a sub. And then the sub came up. But it's still cool. Yeah, it's very cool. And you're like, you're like I want to see the world that generated this. Yeah. And we don't <laughs> No, Like uh, this is another, we were talking about this in burst city last week about how some, when something is supposed to feel crowded, but doesn't uh-huh. as opposed to burst city, which felt crowded and overcrowded at every moment. Yeah. This there's supposed to be a lot of refugees, but if you like from some of the shots they made, it just looks like a, a small handful of them. Yeah. There's 20 dudes. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's including the camera crew. Right. Yeah, uh, so they get on this submarine. There's some conflict because the submarine can't fit everybody, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't... uh, Did these people pay for these seats, I guess? Apparently. And they can only take so many, so they they brutally murder all the rest. (laughs) Yes. um, I guess it's a lottery when you buy one of these tickets. I suppose so. Um, Yeah, it's like those tickets on for a sold-out flight. Like, I don't even know if you can do that anymore, where if somebody dropped... You know, if somebody doesn't show up, you can get on the plane. Yeah, standby, yeah. Yeah, standby tickets. Got it. Only instead of standby, you get shot with an AK-47. <laughs> or drown in the Arctic. <laughs> or drown in the sea, the Baltic Sea. Yeah. Yeah, cool times. <laughs> um, so the inside of this sub, they spent a lot of time on the documentary talking about how much they fucking hated it. <laughs> yeah. that like uh, I didn't yeah. even notice watching it, to be honest. It was fine because... 
there was hardly any time spent there. And the time that was spent there wasn't very interesting. Yeah. Um, none of it was in like, it's, it's a dull part of the movie. It's the, yeah, the mandatory quiet, slow part in an action film. Yeah. Where we get a little bit of Michelle Yeoh backstory. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they really hated the set apparently. Uh, and that was also, that was another thing that it seemed like Kasovitz had a lot of very strong opinions about how sets were to be dressed mm-hmm. and did not understand enough about how movies are made. Yeah. I was kind of to do it correctly as opposed to first showing up on the set, the day he's going to shoot and then being pissy and like kicking things. Yeah. That, that seemed to be his move. Um, yeah. At least that, that's how he comes off in the documentary that he made yes. <laughs> about himself. Yeah. I, that's, I, I do really wish I understood French better just because like, what is the, that, that is such an interesting documentary. It's an hour long and it's worth every fucking second of it. Yeah. Um, that really stands up in ter- like, uh, you know, not quite of a level with uh, the Terry Gilliam doc lost in La Mancha mm-hmm. about his now 25 years ago failed attempt to make a Don Quixote movie mm-hmm. um, that just failed and felt like God was against it. So, yeah, I remember. I never saw the movie, but I've heard the yeah. stories. Yeah, it's a, a great fucking doc. And then there's another one called uh, Overnight, I think, or Overnights, maybe, which was about the guy who did the boondock saints um, where like, and it was his buddy was filming this documentary from like the second that his script got picked up and he became the next big goddamn thing and just proceeded to shoot himself in the foot every fucking step of the way. Remember the times in like, I don't know, 2000 to like 2005 where, a certain type of guy could only legally talk about, talk about Boondock Saints. Saints. Yes, yes, I do remember those times. <laughs> and those I guys, those were guys all over. <laughs> they they really were. And boy, or maybe we just knew a lot of them. I don't know. Boy, I did not get it. <laughs> I did not either. I was never one of those guys. <laughs> nope. I was like, hey, well, well, the phone's fairly entertaining in this. If movie. you're one of those guys, no offense intended to you. Yeah. Many just, of our friends were those guys. <laughs> boy, it was, it, it was, was just, the law. It's just weird that, if you're not one of them. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> I, that is, as a result of that, that's one of my most overrated movies of all times. Cause, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's good. I would have liked it had I seen it without all of the fucking hype. Like, I, it's, I, I disagree. I don't think it's good. I think it's at best fine. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. But, good is in, yeah. Good enough. But, fuck's sake (laughs) there were there was a there was an entire like generation of men walking the earth declaring it citizen kane yeah there really was at least yeah (laughs) like at the top of their lungs (laughs) weird times it was real turn of the century messed a lot of us up yeah yeah it really was it was that uh millenary intention Uh, i don't know i'm not i'm not laying that at the feet of 9-11 all right, you can lay it at Y two K's feet. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, anyway, so we're um, they get on the they get on the fucking submarine. Um, Aurora has a freak out uh, because all the people are getting killed outside, and the submarine. Uh, I don't know. Does a hard reboot? She yeah, she reboots it. She knows how to work a sub to uh-huh. everybody's surprise and to never be informed of why. Yeah, uh, Michelle. It's actually Yeoh. brought up, Michelle Yeoh. How did she know how to work that sub? Yeah, she's always known things. She could speak it too. A lot of kids can speak it too. Nineteen languages. Omg. Yeah, and that's I don't know. Um, All right, let's get past this to the fucking snowmobile. Okay, so uh, the, we get off the submarine. Um, oh yeah, and Mark Strong was like, uh, you know, I once saw a viral bomb go off. Everybody died. Uh, you know, if this girl's carrying a fucking virus, like, what the fuck are you doing? And Vin Diesel's like, I'll kill her myself and burn the body. So then there's a snowmobile chase. They're getting chased by fucking drones. Um, Vin Diesel, like, this is exactly, I swear to God, they might have just used, ha- had I not seen in the documentary the scene of Vin Diesel 
complaining about it. I might have thought they were using like second unit footage left over from Triple uh, X. Yeah, because I'm I'm certain there was a snowmobile chase in that movie as well. I looked up a little additionally, and this is an actual snowmobile team called the Slednecks. Okay. They're like an actual stunt team that the sure. stunt coordinator saw on not on YouTube, but he saw a DVD yeah. of their antics. Um and early viral internet stuff. And I feel like I watched some of these two I, I, on the yeah. early internet yeah. and thought it was so cool. And he showed it to Vin Diesel and Vin Diesel's like, this is the shit. And so they're like, let's make it happen. So they recruited the Slednecks okay. to do all these trips, tricks, cool. which got to say, when you're being chased by a drone and shot at some of the uh, backflips and shit they were doing seem unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't disagree. Um, it was very triple X, which I guess was the style at the time. Yeah. Like tying an onion on your belt. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, there's this chase scene with these fucking drones who are firing missiles and machine guns at him. Uh, Vin ends up blowing up the drones and also getting partially blown up himself. Um, and uh, Mark Strong is like, OK, well, you're mine now. Po- uh, talking to Aurora and you are unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> at Michelle Yeoh and is about to shoot her. And then uh, Vin Diesel shoots him. And that's fair enough. That's mercenary shit. Yeah, that's fair. You know, hey, you know, he knew the fuck. Vin Diesel knew the deal when he was going back to pull the drones off that there's a good chance he was going to die. And eh, what are you going to do? It is it is like a highly unsatisfying end to the character. And it almost makes you wish that he just stayed back in Vladivostok. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Vin says, like, remember, trust no one. Like. You know, because Michelle Yeoh's like, he was your friend. He's like, hey, I can't trust anybody. Um, now you do your Vin Diesel, I'll do my my slice to loon. <laughs> they're not that far off. And it's <laughs> it's kind of mean to Vin Diesel, but I think Vin but Diesel... It's a compliment to Slice to loon. Yeah. So. I think Vin Diesel plays sometimes Slice to loon. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll see Sly soon enough on our original Judge Dredd. <laughs> Oh, Sorry. yeah. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, someday. someday. Um, so then they hang out in a tent um, and eat some chicken. Oh, and Demolition Man. Don't forget that. We're going to see Sly a bit. Yeah, we, we will. Um, God. Yeah, they eat. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was gonna I was gonna go into more sly stuff. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, they eat some chicken in a tent. They have fun times bonding. Yeah. Um, they're all like, yeah, we have a fun time. Uh, Tent's Vin pretty Diesel. cool. By yeah, the way. it's it's a nice tent. It's one of those uh, cool Arctic geodesic dome type things. Yeah. Those things are fucking expensive. I've looked into them. Sure. Um, nice tents, though. Uh, nice tents, baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then this scene, is, uh, this scene ends with uh, Aurora going, we're all going to die in New York. <laughs> And that kills the mood real fucking quick. Yeah. Um, true, though. Yeah, it is true. What happens between the Arctic and New York? It pretty much just smash cuts to New York, right? Uh, well, they go through customs, um, and it's a pretty, like... Oh, they oh God, that's right. They stop at a hotel. Yeah. Uh, and then Diesel has to insert his passport. Yeah. And he's and, shirtless in front of a mirror with all his tats showing, some of which uh, and, have actual meanings. And he looks so like pasty. He does. <laughs> like this is the this is like the scene where I was like, is this racist? Yeah. Uh, he, he looks very pasty. Um, let me speaking of his tats though, I found this on IMDB trivia and I have to read it. Is it the round thing on his neck? No. Although oh, okay. you can if you know about that, you can do that. Okay. It's the Necronomicon or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So this this IMDb trivia says the Cyrillic tattoo on Vin Diesel's left hand reads oh, yeah, Slon, yeah, yeah. elephant, which stands for Solovetsky Lager, Osobogo Naznachinia, Slovaki Special Purpose Camp, one of the earliest gulag encampments, 1923 to 33. Later, this tattoo was popular among criminals with a new interpretation, Smart Ligavayam Otnosha, or Death for cops from a knife. Knife. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pr- it's a pretty good tattoo. <laughs> Fucking cool thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Death for cops from a knife. <laughs> Not with a knife, from a knife. Yep. I don't know why. It seems worse that way. 
Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, and then, and then, our our little girl, uh, what's her name? Aurora. Aurora, who at this point I was assuming was fifteen or sixteen. That's how I had been reading it. <laughs> uh, you are not. You are not alone. <laughs> yeah, I completely was convinced she was a child. Uh, she comes in wearing like skimpy clothes and starts touching Vin on his chest, and they're they're about they're about to pork, as we used to say back in the day. Yes, or <laughs> screw. <laughs> yeah, before they're interrupted by Michelle Yo, who uh, is awkward and not very Michelle Yo like. I feel like she would be like, "Get the fuck away from her." She's yeah, a she child. Would, she would kung fu Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah, and Vin Diesel isn't like actively moving toward her but he's also not being like hey so clearly she's not uh this woman is only like two years older than me she's like your age yeah uh she looks very young in this movie though and she really fucking does i mean they play her up they put her in like like hoodies and stuff which makes her look even younger yeah and i for some reason like 16 is stuck in my mind like i don't know if i don't know if uh Somebody said that, and I just didn't write it down. But I don't think they did. I, th- I, I think that's just an assumption. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, oh yeah, and uh, sorry. In the tent scene, um, or just after the tent scene, uh, we established that Vin's goal is to go back to his birthplace, which is Twenty Seven Cedar Grove, right by the Canadian border, just a little cabin. Um, which that's right. somehow becomes important later. It does. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so they uh, they spend like two minutes going through this pretty cool custom set. I mean, it looks like a mildly futury airport. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a lot for the Canadian border, but yeah, it's not far away from it. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and then they fly in an airplane to New York, um, and they go to a nice townhome. <laughs> like a, a, a nice brownstone. Uh, and Aurora sees that the convent uh, got struck by a missile and everybody's dead on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Vin picks up a blue tube headset and Gorski calls. We're like, so, yeah, honestly, we forgot about Gerard Depardieu. This, I wasn't this point where it, where it broke off, but up at this point, I was still like, kind of on board i was like th- mm-hmm. th- th- they're setting up a weird handoff of the package here but it was kind of cool you know they're like looking down at the street below them and mm-hmm. clearly some shit's about to go down and it looks pretty shadow runny pretty cyberpunky yeah. and uh he's talking to his fixer and he's obviously gonna get double crossed that's all pretty standard yeah i mean obviously <laughs> um and then well go ahead a few minutes <laughs> after that when you find out what the girl's uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So Gorski calls and says, "Okay, uh, you know, just hand over the girl uh, to my guys, who are some bikers who have just pulled up outside." Um, who Matthew Kasovitz was very upset about the bikes that he was being presented with, and the like, cars, and the cars. He was um, like half of the documentary is him bitching about the cars. Yeah. Which honestly, I didn't. Like, I'm usually paying attention to cars. I remember a taxi. Well, here, here's the thing. <laughs> this movie, if if you'll refer back to your IMDb trivia, this movie is ostensibly set in like 2058. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a little odd that the expensive Range Rovers that the Noah Lights drive around are 2006 Range Rovers. <laughs> yeah, it is very odd. <laughs> Um, uh, I don't know why they felt they had to establish that this movie was in 2058, <laughs> uh, but uh, here we are. Um, apparently the novel is set in like 2013 and came out in like 1999, I think. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm assuming it's less futury. <laughs> they could have said it in 2024 and those yeah. 2006 Range Rovers wouldn't have been so out of place. Yeah. Um, so basically Gorski says, okay, uh, give it to my guys and it'll be, it'll be great. And then I'll deactivate the tracker on your, uh, passport. And remember the passport was the thing he injected in his neck. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, um, 
uh, this weird doctor shows up. <laughs> um, and this doctor had been mentioned earlier about how, like, three months previously, he had shown up at the uh, at the convent and run some tests on Aurora. And then she started having the psychic episodes. Didn't he give her a pill or something? They said, yeah. I think. yeah. Um, and the doctor shows up, sticks her finger in a electronic thing, and then like takes off. And uh, Aurora announces to Vin and Michelle Yo that she is pregnant with twins. <laughs> yeah, this is the point where yeah, this is the jumping the shark moment of the movie. The true like, the and, repo- like this is where. It went, to, return. it went to unsalvageable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and Michelle Yeoh's like, no, she's a virgin. And Aurora's like, yeah, I'm a virgin, but I'm still pregnant with twins. So this is obviously a miracle. Anyway. Um, I'm, um, I'm Mary, bitch. Yeah. Then uh, the high priestess calls and says, deliver the girl to the, li- to the limo outside. And Vin's like, okay, whatever. And... So, like, Michelle Yeoh is technically working for the High Priestess? Yes. Yes, she is a Noahlite. The convent right. were Noahlites. The plot does not make sense. Yeah, because clearly um, she's more loyal to uh, Aurora than to her order. Yeah. Uh, the Just the whole... And we haven't even gotten into the, the father thing there's like right keep it doesn't use begin away. to make sense yeah um okay so the fight in the street is pointless it is dumb um so uh aurora says uh if she if she goes with them that she'll die and you know we know she's psychic now so yeah. then they all go out to the street because she's, that's the she's the quisats had yeah um <laughs> yeah exactly uh so Vin's about to put her in the limo and then shoots the doctor in the head. And yeah. there's a big shootout in the street between the bikers and the Noah lights. I and was thinking at this point, Vin, maybe you should have snuck out the back. Vin, would, if you were. Yeah. Do. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, so big shootout between bikers, Noah lights, Vin, Michelle, yo. And also it turns out that uh, Aurora can do Kung Fu, I guess the same way she knows submarine skills. Yeah, I believe she does more in this fight than Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, disappointing again. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we find out what this uh, the tracking device and the passport thing is. A uh, guy, one of one of the biker guys, fires a missile and it's like following Vin around, and he manages to not. He manages to escape the first one. Uh, spoiler: going back to the first thirty seconds of the movie, he does not escape the second one, but that's a minute down the road. Um, He he, he actually does. eh. Um, The only way to escape it is death. Right. Um, He says that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Yeoh gets shot in the gut. She dead now. Because that's a good use of her character and energy. She says protect the girl or something like that. Yeah. So Vin gets shot um, and he, but then he manages to get to Aurora and she's just kind of like walking through the middle of all this shit at this point. She had been doing Kung Fu, but now she's just like walking. Yeah. Um, And he comes up to her and she says, I need you to live and shoots him in the fucking gut. (laughs) Yeah. And then the missile blows up like, basically in her face. Don't worry about it. We'll come back to that later mm-hmm. for some reason. Uh, then we go to a board meeting that the priestess is in. People are oh, angry God, that. that they're not going to have the virgin birth. And it turns out that this is after the fact. Like, this is a couple of days later. Um, Vin's body has been stolen from the morgue five days ago in New Jersey. Um, there, he has a body, so that missile couldn't have hit. Yeah. That missile evaporated a panel van. It would have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then we cut to Vin and he's on a slab and he wakes up and he now has a cyber hand and foot. Boom, bitch. We've got cyberpunk. We do have cyberpunk. (laughs) 
10 minutes before the end of the movie. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> it is official. Um, uh, there is a guy there named uh, Dr. Darkande, uh, who is played by Lambert Wilson, um, who is, I mean, he's, he's the most fun performance in the movie. I don't know what yeah. the fuck he's doing. What little time he's in it. But he's doing some shit. Um, and he's like got this fucking like metal neck brace and like tubes sticking out of him with like colored liquids in them and shit. He's definitely cyberpunk looking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not good cyberpunk, but no. Um, and it's the fun part is he's wearing like this fucking tweed suit that like these fucking tubes are just sticking through. It's dumb as hell. Yeah. <laughs> like it is deeply dumb but pretty funny um and then he decides to explain the plot of the movie sort of <laughs> Can, do you do you want to give it a go or do you want me to do it with my notes uh you do it because i'm still not sure i understand okay so dr doc was drummed out of medicine for making babies with ai yeah. um <laughs> the the noah lights paid him to make Aurora uh, with a supercomputer as a mother. <laughs> oh my God. I, I am not butchering this nearly as much as it seems like I am. Then the Noah lights hired Gorski, but, uh, but he came to view Aurora as his daughter. Um, then the Noah lights hired Gorski to kill him, uh, but he didn't die. And Gorski took the baby and hid her from the Noah lights. I like this. I went over this like three times watching the movie. Okay. Because it doesn't make any sense, but he's, she's in a Noah light convent at the beginning. So exactly. He hid her from the Noah lights in a Noah light convent. Apparently oh, hiding in plain sight. Sure. Um, so then we get, uh, so that's the plot. Um, the Noah lights need her wow, it's to do her version. Birth. You describe it. It's very bad. <laughs> um, it's very bad and doesn't the it's not built up or it's not built up correctly, nor does it pay off correctly. <laughs> I, think like, I, I think I tuned out when he said I would make babies with AI. Yeah, because that's yeah. Yeah. Fucked up. That's, why why, that's why would you do that? <laughs> That's understandable. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's nonsense. That's not um, something. If we had the power to do that, I don't know why anybody would. That's one. That's yeah, just a I, dumb sure. thing to want. Well, yeah, I, I don't disagree. I mean, you're getting no argument from me, man. Are um, you growing them? I'm sorry. I'm still. <laughs> don't robots with AI. I get. I would recommend not worrying about it because all you're gonna do is be asking questions. You, you make babies with I. <laughs> like it comes, uh -huh. hey, you don't have to do the extra work. The eye develops and there's plenty of ways to manipulate that intelligence. <sighs> I, I, <laughs> uh huh? <laughs> so fucking stupid. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Yeah. I clearly just blacked out when I heard that because I did not. Yeah. The rest of it was, did not register. <laughs> that is, that is entirely understandable. <laughs> Babies with AI. <laughs> so so, you so the... that's the plot. <laughs> sure. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> we have one tiny bit of plot left after this, but that's a, that's in like two scenes. <laughs> um, yeah. And it doesn't make any more sense. So who cares? Um, so now we're going to do this thing to figure out because Doc Candier is convinced that Aurora didn't die. So... They're going to do a fucking brain dance of Vin yeah. dying. Literally a brain dance. Yeah. Um, you know, this is enough plot for like a movie right here. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, well. So we go through the scene. I mean, the last 10 minutes of this are very cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, they really are. It's Vin Diesel gets all these, these cool cybernetic limbs that he absolutely does not use at all. <laughs> Uh, he does once. Um, He's like punch a window or something. Yeah, like he punches a window. <laughs> um, that's it. Okay. Okay, so um, so we're going to do a brain dance thing where he's replaying his death, hopefully in slow motion to get clues as to where 
uh, Aurora has gone. Um, this whole thing, we're showing like little snippets in slow motion and stuff of the, you know, big fight in the street. Uh, it still looks fucking stupid, except just intercut with scenes of Vin's face as it looks like he's trying to shit a bowling ball. Yeah, because POV memories always contain yeah. shots looking at your own face. Yeah, don't worry about that. Um, and we see the missile blowing up like 18 inches in front of Aurora, if that's six inches in front of Aurora. And in this super slow motion memory thing, uh, she says, go home. And then we're like, okay. And we're like, hmm, work at home possibly. Perhaps it's at the one exact address that was stated earlier in the film, like yeah. numbers, letters, zip code. <laughs> yeah. We could drive there right now if we wanted to. Yeah. Um, uh, so then they pulled Vin out of it, but he is like almost dead, but he's super tough. So it doesn't matter. I don't know. Um, I'm just tired at this point. And he's like, I know where she is. And then we cut to the priestess. <sighs> um, she calls Gorski. Uh, Gorski is cruising around in his APC. And uh, he's like, are you threatening me? Uh, and she's like, we know you didn't kill Doc And he's like, you would need the nuke to kill me. And then like on the screens of his APC, he sees like incoming <laughs> yeah. two, one, and then it blows up. So that's vaguely fun. I, I guess I bet, I bet Depardieu got no less than $1 million for his generously three minutes of screen time. <laughs> yeah. It could have been a cool character too. The, his death could have been a payoff. Had they built him up to be worse or yeah. anything other than just yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, so Dark Andier sends Vin and his, and a bunch of dudes, the parkour guys, to save Aurora. Um, the priestess shows up just after they have left and yells at Dark Andier and shoots him. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He's and, dead now. Uh, this is kind of the end of the plot of the movie, somehow. Um, so Vin and the dudes go to Vin's childhood home. Um, Aurora's there. They pick her up and roll out. Then they're being pursued by fucking Range Rovers and helicopters. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a dumb car chase uh, shot uh, pretty much exclusively on what appear to be abandoned airport runways, yeah. which is a really great place to shoot a car chase, but it's not a great place for a car chase to look like it is taking place. <laughs> yeah, Just I, FYI. I get the distinction that you're trying to get across. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Vin punches a window in her fucking Range Rover and throws a grenade inside and then like fucking machine guns the wheels and the Range Rovers die. Uh, the helicopter is never addressed. Don't worry about it. Um, this is the end of the movie, except we cut to the future. Um, we're in a what hospital. Happened? Doesn't Aurora. What happens to Aurora? Well, we cut to the future in a hospital nursery. Vin is wearing a Zoo York polo shirt and Tim's. Oh, right. Okay. I remember this. So it's exactly 2008. Yeah. Um, and uh, Aurora is very pregnant and uh, says, You're their father now, Turup. Take care of them. She dies in childbirth? Uh, well, then we cut to, I don't know, five years later? Question mark? Um. And there are two kids, uh, one of which is, uh, let's say, colored like Vin, and the other of which is colored like uh, uh, Aurora. Aurora. Not colored and, like Vin in this movie. No. Um, and they're outside of a cabin, and Vin comes out wearing some uh, very flowy linen pants. Uh, like the You're very linen you know, and linen shirt. He was totally yeah. linened out. Oh yeah. He was linened as fuck. Um, and says, come on kids, let's go inside. There's a storm coming. And that is the, then the little kids say something like daddy, when a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Sure. Teacher says, and that I think some, something like that was said. I don't remember. Yeah. I think that was exactly this movie. Okay. Good. Uh, so then some rap starts and it's the credits. Perfect ending to a perfect film. It was a movie? Question mark. 
was earned. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I don't know what to say about it. Because, like, honestly, up until the point where she announces that she is pregnant with twins, it could have been fine. It could have been. Like, that's the last 20 minutes, or if that, 15 minutes maybe. And but it goes boy, off the rails. You, like, and the thing is, it's incredible that it goes so far off the rails because there is, again, like, I would have happily watched a fucking movie where Vin Diesel is a cyber mercenary and Dr. Darkandier is like his fixer or yeah. something. Like, those things are very cool. The brain dance thing, like, that could easily be the plot of a movie. Like, mm-hmm. This guy has to relive the last moments of his life and follow the clues to, you know. Yeah. But, oh, that'd be a great movie. Uh, but it's the plot of many adventures in Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. But fuck, it falls off a cliff. I mean, and it doesn't help that the, like, the previous, I don't know, 20 minutes to the, uh, to the, I'm having twins thing is kind of boring like the yeah it is you know the snowmobile chase is like and it's a good example of a snowmobile chase but it's also i mean it's sort of just treading maybe water that's, maybe that's why they threw the almost sex scene in to to sexy it up and give us something because you're right from the with them getting the snowmobile to new york is just boring i and it's, it's at the part of the movie when it should be at its most exciting <laughs> Yeah, like the move, the excitement level of the movie kind of drops off a cliff. Like the second that they get onto the submarine, mm-hmm. like I mean, the snowmobiles, like like I said, that's cool, but it's also kind of treading water. It's just like, okay, we're watching a Bond movie. Oh, here's a car chase. Right. Like, even though it might be a really good example of a car chase, it's not inherently interesting in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. And then the the virgin birth stuff, it, it comes out of fucking nowhere, man. Like, they're not alluding to it. Nope. They're not hinting other than, like, the slightest hint that that her dad is a weird cyber guy. <laughs> or uh, yeah. I think the high priestess makes the, the vaguest yeah. allusion to it. But nothing, if you, like, nothing nobody's going to pick up on. Yeah. And then suddenly I'm pregnant with twins and I'm a virgin. And you're like, What? why yeah and we wasted michelle yo and uh, yeah it's a it's a fascinating movie (laughs) it's it is kind of fascinating in that like i don't know it's kind of a how not to make a movie (laughs) yeah and it's funny when you watch the uh the doc fucking kasovitz he is so angry that it doesn't look futuristic enough or the fights aren't fast enough or this and that and he doesn't seem to notice that the story is dumb and bad. Yeah. And that's uh, one of the things that uh, there's a point at which he's in a meeting and he says to, I think it's all the heads of production and the producer, uh, like, he, and as much as he has been bitching about Vin Diesel in French for this entire fucking doc, um, he says, now, you know what, Vin, you know what Vin said to me? Okay. And he is not the dumbest guy here. Um, <laughs> we have to shut this movie down for two weeks and figure out what is going on. <laughs> and I was angry, but I realized he was right. <laughs> because and there, it also shows. Um, I think it's in the, I think it's in the exterior of the tent scene. Mm-hmm. Um, Vin, like on set and saying like, okay, look, we can't fucking like, there is a serious problem here. Like we haven't shot the, like we haven't shot the snowmobile stuff. We don't know how injured I'm going to be. We don't know what the makeup's going to be like. Like all we have here is this dialogue that we have to try to sell. And we have no idea where our characters are. Like, am I on the verge of death at this moment? Or, what? He should have we, been, but he, we can't, he wasn't. We can't do this. Like, this is not how you shoot. We You can't shoot a movie this way. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, if you read ahead. the behind the scenes, the snowmobile scene was 
apparently a huge disaster as well. Like they had to move across the country or they had to move to Sweden, Sweden? or something. Yeah. Because France or wherever they're no, they're in Eastern Europe. Czech Republic. I yeah, think. Czech Republic. It wouldn't snow or, or something like that. Yeah. It was weather issues. And so they had to move and it like delayed and delayed and they ran out of money and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but yeah, clearly, I don't know. The documentary, we could do a whole episode on it if we could understand it a little bit better. Yeah, it, it honestly, I like I said, I so wish I spoke French better. Cause he, he seems like he wants to make Vin Diesel the bad guy, but Vin Diesel doesn't really come off as the bad guy. Vin Diesel comes off as at an most, actor who does at, a thing and he does it really well. Yeah, at most he comes off as a limited guy who is doing his fucking best. Yeah, they hired him to do a job. He's there to do the job and it's not what they want him to do, but he doesn't, it's what he does. Yeah. And he's tr- like, he's trying to make this as good as he possibly can. <laughs> right. So, uh, that's, that's Babylon AD. Um, thank shall- you to Mupper for suggesting it. <laughs> yeah. I love movies. And that's kind of two in a row that aren't, uh, Burst City is, it's, is its own thing and everybody should watch it but it's not fun to watch <laughs> and this movie kind of the same way, but they're both fun to talk about. So I, I think burst city is much more interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, this movie is probably more interesting to discuss because yeah. there are so many wrong turns it made. Um, let's rate it real quick. Okay. Story. I'm gonna give uh, the story a deuce. Hi, fuck. Is that too mean? No, uh, I was considering one and a half. So uh, I think two is. God, I, I want to read the book. I'm going to read the book at some point. All right. Uh, like I'm trying to like we definitely most of our story virtuosity. We gave it to. Is it better or worse than virtuosity? I think virtuosity is more coherent. All right. One point five. One point five. Uh, yeah. I mean, virtuosity story was not interesting or good, but it was it made sense. Pretty coherent. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, if they just left out the virgin birth stuff and just made it being about rescuing a girl who didn't deserve, yeah, all this like bullshit. all you, you all you, you had to the do psychic powers. All you had to do was set it up to uh, somebody kidnap like Darkandier, um made Aurora as his daughter and somebody kidnapped her and hit her. Yeah. And now he's found out where she is and wants her back. Done. Perfect. The, the stakes <laughs> don't have to be no uh, the end of the world level. or fucking it, yeah, Paul Atreides. <laughs> it was 2008 though. Everything had to be like this is yeah. a year before Iron Man. Like disaster movies were huge. But here's the thing. Iron Man, you know what the climax of Iron Man was? Jeff Bridges in a metal suit punching Iron Man who was punching him. Yeah. It wasn't the end true. of the world. That's true. <laughs> I mean, it was Jeff Bridges in a big robot suit. <laughs> uh, King. Yeah. All right. Influence. Uh, Ooh, I hope this did not influence anything. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess I'm going to go one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd say one. Um, I yeah, do not. As low as you can get. I it's had time to influence and it has proven that it does not. I am uncertain that I had heard about this movie prior to two weeks ago. And Vin Diesel is a major movie star and I've yeah. seen a lot of his movies. <laughs> Prescience. And yeah. How did I not know about this? It's a, it's an English language, Michelle Yeoh film, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how did I miss that? Prescience. Uh, sure. I believe Bendo Bengal tigers will go extinct soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe submarines will transport refugees across the Bering Strait. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch this guy. How? Uh, I don't know, man. Four? Sure. I don't know. There will be a snow piercer. Yeah, let's go four and a half. All right. Cage fights. Uh, like, we know the future is going to include scaffolding and cage fights. Yes. A four and a half. Style. Fuck. Uh, I want to give it very bad ratings on this because Vin Diesel spends the entire movie in a, in a North face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dressed like a rapper in a 2006 music video. He's just wearing Tim's. <laughs> um, 
God, you're right. I did like some of the shots of New York. They looked a little cyberpunky. Yeah. And uh, like the uh, the club was all right. But man, this really doesn't have much style at all. I think. I mean, like the best style it had was that first two minutes where it's on the fucking street in Russia. Yeah. And then, yeah. I'm gonna go three. I think three is fair. Yeah. Okay. I'll g- I'll go as high as three, if only because of the fucking Zoo York polo, which just <laughs> takes me back, takes me back to my honeymoon in Zoo York in 08. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then finally, hand raisers, one out of five. What? Fuck. What do you give this? Fuck off. Uh, God, what have we given previous things? I want to like my instinct is two, but I'm leaning lower. Uh, what did you give lower than two? Uh, Cyber Vengeance, you gave a one. Sure. Lead a Battle Angel, you gave 2.5, and I gave that a two. I like... This is much better than that. uh, I mean, that was much better than this. Yeah, I like a Lead a Battle Angel much more than this, so I am going to give this a... Can I do a (laughs) 1.75? Yeah, that's hard for me to fit into my space here, but I'm actually going to go to... I think I liked it. Until the end, I liked it as much as Elite Battle Angel. I just, the whole movie, like... Uh, it's not as good. I'll be clear. Yeah. But as my enjoyment. As we've discussed before. Oh, actually, that's perfect. Uh, fucking Lambert Wilson in this movie is playing what could be a Christoph Waltz part. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, like, the way my brain works as far as, like, story math and stuff like that and plotting, like... This movie fucked the dog hard in the last 20 minutes. Just like it did. It that dog, that dog got so fucked. Yeah. Dog. It, yeah. It was like the dog that was uh, hanging up in the butcher shop in the market in Vladivostok that we saw. Yeah. Um, or the dog that got uh, kicked in Alita battle angel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh! I forgot oh, about that. Poor fucked dogs. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Like, there's, there's, fun, cool stuff in this movie, but fuck, it does not outweigh the. I will say, if it had been another fifteen minutes, my rating would drop precipitously. The fact that it came in at a tight ninety, that <laughs> helped it helped me enjoy it. I think it needed more time, and if well, it had been, it good, either needed. It either needed more time or less time. Like, yeah, I, don't know. I think you could make a really cool movie at 60 minutes with this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you um, could have made the whole movie getting like getting them on the submarine and into Alaska. Like anything yeah. leading up to that would have been interesting. Uh, like you said, the brain from the brain dance on would have been an interesting movie. But what it, we could we can shut the fuck up. We could talk about this yeah. for long enough. There's one more fact about this movie we need to share. Though. Okay, give me that fact, baby. That fact is that it's in the IMDb trivia, and I've seen it on Google. Many people considered this to be a remake of another movie. This is an important fact for us. Yeah, it's considered to be a loose remake or updated version of the 1989 Jean Claude Van Damme movie Cyborg. So we decided. <laughs> Next week, we don't have anything else to do. Plus, uh, I'm leaving town for the following week, so we kind of need something not too intensive. We're just going to watch Cyborg. <laughs> yeah, we're going to watch fucking Cyborg, and we're going to goddamn like it. <laughs> um, I'm kind of excited for it. Yeah, 1989, directed by Albert Pyun, uh, who is a pretty wild and interesting guy. Um, we know that this movie... And also Albert Pyun has some fans in our audience. Mm -hmm. Um, Shout out to Mike. Also, I am just now seeing on the uh, Wikipedia page, uh, the film was shot entirely in Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, baby, we're coming home. Coming home. Uh, Cue up. Cue up the Paula Cole. Hell yeah. Um, I'm excited. We're going to watch Cyborg. We're going to Van Damme it up again. He's This is his second round on our show, possibly his last. Probably not, though. Uh, yeah, God knows. And uh, I'm embracing it with open arms. And we're going to see who did it better. And we're going to actually maybe look into if it is, in fact, a remake or an updated version of that, or if that's just people on the internet being dumbasses. And hey, uh, if if it works, 
if we like it. There is a Cyborg 2 and a Cyborg 3. Cyborg 2 stars Elias Codius. Oh, really? Yeah, who was. Yeah, Casey Jones in the 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle films. Yeah, a co-star of The Great Ice-T. Yes. In Law and Order. Yes, and Angelina Jolie. Oh, shit. We're going to have to watch Cyborg 2. And in 1995, Cyborg 3, The Recycler. Cyborg 2 is Angelina Jolie's first movie, I think. We talked about that in the Hackers. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll probably not do them back-to-back, though. Don't worry. So next week, Cyborg. It's on uh, Prime yeah. Video, at least, if you want to rent it. Um, it's on we- The Seven Seas, if you're into that shit, too. Yes, we are definitely not doing Cyborg 2 the next week. The next week, you're going to be out of town. So we're taking a break. And then the week after that, we're going to do Snow Crash. Yeah. So next week is the 13th. Then we're taking that. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be two days after Christmas. But our holiday episode is going to be Neil Stevenson. Yes. Neil Stevenson's book, Snow Crash. It's kind of a... It's a pretty fair sized novel, so if you are going to be reading or listening to it, you might consider starting. Yeah, Um, I'm going to start uh, very soon. It is regarded as a classic work of the genre, um, even though it is in large part taking the piss out of it. Right. Uh, It's one of the big ones, though. We decided it is a big one to do a big one, and what better time than uh, the holiday season? Yes. Um, yeah. So that'll, uh, I'm guessing that'll stretch to a two parter. Most likely. Um, maybe three. Who knows? Yeah. Well, we'll see. So anyway, you might, uh, start with that if you're interested. It is available on Audible and also, I believe, um, the seven seas, um, audiobook content, et cetera. Yes. So. Cyborg and Snow Crash. What more could you ask for on these days leading up to the end of 2023? Uh, yeah. We got you covered. And we're almost certainly going to have to try to shoehorn in a, a Patreon episode in there, too. Oh, which yeah. Which I believe we've already talked about what that yes, is. Yes, we did discuss that. Um, yeah. So, all right. That's okay. our future. Until then, check us out on Twitter slash X. Yes. And um, check us out on Blue Sky, patreon.com slash high tech low life if you want to give us a few dollars and listen to our weird unedited bullshit. Yeah. Um, oh, and I did, uh, when we took a break earlier, I did post the screenshot uh, from uh, Monarch Legacy of Ga- Legacy of Monsters. So Yes. Yes. I enjoy that. All right, guys. Uh, it's been fun. Until next week. You need two things to live in this business. Your balls and your word. You don't have either. I still got both. Boom. Bye-bye. That's podcasting, baby. Bye. This has been the High Tech Low Life Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Johnny60Seconds. Email us at HighTechLowLifePodcast at gmail.com. And find us on Patreon at Patreon.com slash HighTechLowLife. Theme music by Nihilor at Nihilor.com. Thank you for listening.